this is Phil Masters. We are working on part eight of building the apprehension engine. We're building the front framing, uh, getting the apprehension engine ready to go so that we can do the front. And then in the following video, we're gonna do the rear framing. And then we're gonna skin the apprehension engine, getting it ready so it starts to look like the apprehension engine itself. So it's pretty exciting. So let's get straight into this tutorial. So we're gonna be framing now the apprehension engine. And as you can see, this is what it's going to look like at the end of uh, the next two videos. So part one and part two of framing. So first of all, let's have a look at what we need. We need some uh, chipboard screws or just some standard uh, screws that you can screw in. I've got 25 millimeters is the length. And we also need some right angled brackets. Now these brackets are found at a hardware store. These ones are zinc plated and uh, 38 millimeters. Now, what you want to do those when you get them, you want to make sure that they fit on the wood. So you can get different sizes, obviously, some for framing pictures and so forth. This one obviously has come in a pack of 16 for $3, so I was pretty happy with that. But as you can see, you want it so it doesn't overhang on the wood. So if you find something cheaper, uh, grab one of those. So you need at least eight of them. And what we'll do is be using the same wood uh, that we've used for the framing before, as you can see the same measurements and thickness. And what we wanna do is measure between the front at the very base, between the inside of the two sides that we've created. Now, the reason we're doing this, and I'm not giving you any measurements because it's gonna be based on your box. So if it's out a few millimeters again, this measurement uh, will be uh, able to suit for you. Um, and you need two of them. So obviously, as you can see, I've already uh, cut them uh, to size, being exactly the same length. So one will uh, fit up the very top, and the other one is gonna lay down like I'm showing you at the moment, and we'll glue that to the base. And we need to make sure that's folded on its side, whereas the one at the top, will be installed vertically. So what you can see here on the side, see I have to pull it apart slightly. That is because of the fact that the sides have slightly come in a little bit. Maybe it's because of a mismeasurement. However, because we made sure the top and the bottom are the same, it's gonna make it nice and square. Let's install the lower bracket. So first of all, I'm just gonna put some glue on the base of it. Then we need to make sure that we put glue on the sides as well, because anywhere where it comes into contact, we wanna make sure there's glue on there. Now you can uh, put a screw up from underneath it um, to lock it in. However, I'm gonna use uh, the C clamps um, or the bulldog clips as uh, they're called um, in order to hold it down. So as you can see, I've put the glue on it and now it's just about putting it in position, making sure it's nice and flush against the plywood base right on the corner there. So I'm gonna push it down as you can see. Uh, if there's any excess glue, just make sure you clean it up. You can see there's a slight bit of a gap in between. So these bulldog clips are going to help to secure it. Now there's different options. Obviously you can allow it to dry and then move on to the next part. However, because I'm building this tutorial and I'm um, putting it together as quickly as possible for you guys, you just can take more time in building it and getting it right. Whereas I'm just showing you where the location of everything is. At the same time, this is going to be my apprehension engine I'm going to be using. And as you can see, it's nice and flush. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab the second piece and I'm going to put the right angled brackets in. And I'm just going to uh, put them in on both corners and I'll show you how I'm going to install it. So as you can see, I've got it there. One thing you can do is get a bit of scrap timber like I'm showing you here, just to make sure it's nice and flush up against that butt joint. Um, and then getting the screw in, finding the location for it. And obviously depending on the type of tools you have, you can use a screwdriver, which I'll be using. Um, you can also get a screwdriver in a drill or you can get one of those uh, battery operated hand drills. Um, it depends on what type of tool kits. I'm showing you, you can actually do it by hand, obviously the old fashioned way. As you can see, I've put a mark in there and I'm going to uh, push uh, some pressure behind the screw and this will allow it to start to self taper itself into the wood. Now it's ideal not to use nails, so don't use nails in this particular uh, part of the build. You need to use a screw. Um, so make sure that you get them. You can get them fairly cheap. And in fact, I bought a box of a hundred for $5. So, and again, I'm just checking the wood to make sure it's nice and straight. 
and then I'm gonna put the second screw in uh, to secure it. Now, one thing I'm gonna do in this video is I'm not gonna spend a lot of time showing you over and over again how to actually screw in these brackets, because once I've showed you once, I think that should be enough uh, for you to get the idea of how to do it. And then we'll just focus on where the actual particular pieces of wood go and what uh, parts that we're measuring from in order to get it to fit and make sure that your apprehension engine box is nice and square. So as again, uh, what I was saying beforehand, uh, you can use a drill um, and I'm going to show you as well, uh, using a drill to uh, put it in uh, using the same type of method. So I've got a piece of uh, timber, I've got my uh, Phillips head screw uh, into the actual drill and uh, obviously you just apply a little bit of pressure to it making sure that uh, obviously the screw is on the head properly. It's a good idea to go slow. If you go too fast, you may split the timber. So just going nice and slow in. And obviously that's a quicker way of doing it. And like I said before, if you've got a battery operated one, you can do that. Just to close up, I wanna show you another method um, in order to uh, put this bracket in. I'm using it in a vise, same thing, um, but putting it in a vise allows me to actually uh, use both my hands when I'm trying to screw it and to get it nice and straight. So if you do have a vise, it is a preferred option. However, obviously I'm trying to show you that you can build this thing with basic tools. So again, this is just a better option to make sure that bracket's nice and straight. And as you can see, once you release it out of uh, the actual vise, you can see it's nice and square, which is what you're after. So we have our right angled brackets installed now on the top part of the wood. Now this is gonna be a part where the soundboard will be on. So you need to make sure that it is lining up with the top side parts. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna install it like so. So there's enough pressure obviously from the wood trying to push in to allow it to sit there, but you need to make sure it's nice and flush with the top. So, and that is again, because the soundboard is actually going to be screwed onto that part. And if it's out a little bit, it could cause vibrations, which is something I'm trying not to do on this build because extra vibrations means it's something that we can't control with the sound. So I've gone in there, I've marked where I want to put the screws and I'm going to use a drill and making sure that the drill bit is not thicker than the actual screw. And I've showed you that in previous videos. I'm just going to drill holes where the screw is going to go on both sides of the bracket. Then allow me to uh, put glue onto the actual bracket itself uh, on the pieces of wood. Obviously not the metal because the metal is not going to stick with wood glue. Um, and then we're going to install it and then using uh, the screwdriver will screw the screws in and lock it into place. So here's just a close up of where we need to put the glue uh, on that top bracket. So on both edges, not just the one side, so you need it on both sides. And again, it's just installing it and making sure it's nice and straight or flush with the top. In this situation, it's probably best to use a hand screwdriver um, only because of the fact that if you're trying to get a larger uh, electric device in there, you may actually twist it while you're doing it, which may cause your wood to snap or to uh, fracture or crack. And that's something, again, we don't want to do because it means that you'll need to then go and cut another piece of timber and do it again. So one thing I wanna show you here is when I'm putting the screws in to make sure everything's all lined up properly, I won't tighten them all up at the same time. So what will happen is I'll screw it almost all the way in and then leaving the screws out a little bit and I'll do that for both sides and then I'll go back into it and then what I'll do is I'll adjust it and tighten it uh, on each side one at a time, allowing it to make sure that that bracket is nice and square um, and making sure that the glue sets obviously and making sure that both faces of the pieces of wood are adhering together um, and making sure they're nice and flush. So again, it's about screwing them not all the way in, making sure they're all lined up properly. It's up to you. Again, you've got more time to build this than I do. So maybe allow the glue to set and then finish screwing it all the way in, making sure that the wood is nicely lined up. The brackets themselves allow the actual apprehension engine to keep its shape and to help to stop the uh, vibration going through the box, which again is something that we're really trying to push away from. We don't want any other vibrations going through. The only vibrations we want to get through this box is the ones that we're creating. So that way we have full control over those actual sounds. 
So here I am, I'm just turning the apprehension engine on its side and screwing in each side uh, so it's nice and tight. And I've done that for both sides. And obviously I've sped the video up so you don't have to watch me screw each screw in. We've now finished the first part of framing the apprehension engine at the very front. We're gonna let that dry. In the next video, we're going to fill out the back part with the rest of the framing and we'll get it back to the actual framing being all completed, ready to move on to skinning the apprehension engine. So in the next, so in the next video, we're going to have the framing looking like this. So stay tuned for the next part of building the apprehension engine, which will be part nine. And that is doing the front framing of the apprehension engine. So the box is starting to come together. Um, in the next video, we're going to start building the back frame and then we're going to uh, get that all ready to go. So then we can start to put the frame on it and actually make it look like a box and start to turn into the apprehension engine itself. So if you want to become a film master sub, it's pretty simple. You can subscribe to the channel. You can like me on Facebook and or on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master it. Thank mm -hmm. you.